Welcome back to tutorial number three of the World Creator 2023 Alpha Access preview release. Um, my name is Stefan Kraus from Byte the Bytes, and in this video, I am going to show you the very, 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 very basic things of a biome setting along with the combination of filters. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first one is we're opening up the terrain tab, opening up the biomes tab, and we have the biome which is called global selected. You can rename biomes and uh, materials and any other kind of layers by just double clicking on the name. So we're gonna call this like a canyon style biome here. So um, the biome has here a tint color which could be just like tinted for specific reasons so you are quickly can reference a color to a, some sort of a canyon or a, uh, to, a, to, a, to a biome style. You have here the general strength values for the biome which means increasing the noise um, giving, you, giving the generator more data to be used for generation. You can reset values by double clicking by double right clicking on the name itself so if you're changing a value and you go to the name here and you double uh, right click on it, it uh, puts back the, the settings to, to its original. You also can offset biomes, which does not have really much of effect right here because they're, they're, there's a specific setting for it. But it means actually like navigating on a virtual endless terrain, um, finding better spots if you don't like that spot that you have here right now. The level steps are a really um, special thing for which I'm going to do a separate video for now just keep them as is for those who already know how it works due to work creator 2 um, the behavior is, is, is uh, still exactly the same now comes the more interesting part here which is called a base shape settings so in work creator 2023 we have these typical yeah styles we call them base uh, shape styles for example, that the classic style is what you know from World Creator 2 and World Creator 2023, uh, 2022. Now in 2023, you on top have have a style which is called like for a canyon, which means it creates a more like a canyon base style terrain that you will recognize pretty pretty quickly as a specific uh, kind of terrain. Um, you also have things like an island terrain, you have mountains and dunes and whatever. You can select these and each time you select them, you get some interesting settings here, which means you're creating exactly the same thing like here with a, with a seed value. You can use to create a different style of terrain, uh, a different canyon style. You have, for example, uh, for, for the canyon, you can control the scale right um which i'm going to leave it right around something like here for example you can control the inner scale the outer scale so a lot of lot of settings here you can use for the river banks for the banking itself for the terraces and for the mountains so it's like an internal generator for the biome to create a specific terrain type that you can use as a base terrain you are trying to create okay and that is a biome. Since you can have multiple biomes on World Creator, and you will see that in a, in a, in a later video, um, which actually means you're creating a much larger, larger landscapes, you're splitting up the landscapes into biomes and you're creating the styles for the biomes with a different color, with different filters, with a, with a complete different uh, terrain look. And all these will blend in together to seamless uh, planetary world style terrain, okay? So for now, we'll just leave the canyon here. Um, for you, important to notice is that you have these base shape settings and this is just the beginning. We're adding more and more over time. Okay, now it's time to go over to the filters. So just open up that biome here and you get the filters list and the materials list. In this video, we'll just cover the filters. So hit the plus button here and there's a pop-up I'm showing up which has a search field so it means you can search for a specific filter or filter type and it lists all of them um, you may also just iterate on your own through each categories and select the filter that you would like to apply here it's a pretty nice minecraft filter like creating blocks you can control 
Um, I'm not going to explain the filters now because the filters will be explained in an um, offline documentation, uh, in, an, in an online and offline documentation. You can access that kind of documentation if you click that button here, then it will exactly go into the, uh, to the Kenyan, to, to the selected node and open up um, the online documentation for that node only. And that will be also available for the filters. So each of these values will be explained in detail um, in an online and offline documentation. However, I just would like to show you um, a bunch of these filters. I'm going through here um, so you are aware there's really, really a lot of things. And of course you can combine filters. Oh, here seems to be a, here seems to be an issue. I need to note that down. Um, then we have, of course, hydraulic simulations. We have different kind of erosions here. We have some sediment stuff and we have, which is really, really powerful. It's not fully finished yet, but we have real simulators simulating particles that are falling down on the terrain, modifying the terrain in some way and creating sediments, scarring in the terrain, breaking up the terrain and everything else you can think of. And the really cool about this is that those particles um, can also be accessed by several layers for the material. So for example, if there's a sandstorm coming and it creates sand on the terrain, you'll be able to set up the material like sand and say, okay, I want to color all those sand particles that were on my terrain and spread on the terrain and they go into the flows and all these stuff. Okay. That's really, really amazing. Um, it's still under development, but it's doing a really good job already. We will leave them as experimental. So if you use these, um, be aware that they might change. So if you're creating a project for your game or for whatever, um, you must be aware that if those change, then of course the terrain will change as well. However, this will be um, finished um, in 2023 once we have released World Creator 2023 afterwards. Okay, um, now regarding this sort of thing, I'm going to um, set up a uh, particle sediment filter here because I want to create a terrain kind of style of terrain. And um, let me quickly see. Um, because I made a made a previous one before, so I'm going to add the rocky plateaus on top. So that is like this one here, and that way we have this typical kind of canyon style. Like you have these larger flattened areas on the top. You have these um, erosion lines in, and it's pretty steep. So um, and you have these kind of river banks here. Um, that would be like a typical canyon that you created and we just iterate through this a little bit. So this was how it would look like with these, just these two filters and you can see it's entering real time. It's really fast. Um, no need to wait. Now let's see how it would look like if I'm going to scale it up to a larger terrain. So that would come out if I'm exporting a 4k terrain. Um, yeah would be a very western like canyon style um, and you can as I said you can you can of course tweak and adapt everything here so um, even modify the entire canyon okay now I'm going back to my 1k terrain here so we have everything in one screen and the filters now that's really interesting the filters can also be grouped now that's new like I can drop in this one and this one into that folder here. Um, and what I also can do is like renaming that folder. So I'm going to name it like uh, Kenyan style zero one because I want to set up another kind of Kenyan style. And for this one, for the new one, I'm going to um, setting up, oh wait, I'm going to first set up my folder. So we have here Kenyan style zero two and we were gonna put in the um, inflate effect which is really cool because it creates those heavy plates and um, 
We also add the uh, dry canyon here. So now we have really weird looking, interesting um, kind of terrain here. And of course, you can also combine both um, using the filters below here. And that way you can also check which fits better to my game, which fits better to my uh, terrain that I want to create actually. Of course, you can also add more and more filters so you're not limited to anything. Um, um, and yeah, you have a lot of, a uh, lot of, really a lot of uh, possibilities to tweak and adjust everything um, regarding your terrains here using the filters. Now, another thing about filters is, let me see, I would like to use the, um, I'm going to disable these ones. I'm going to add a specific effect now because it's best seen with that. Use, let's use the effect blocks that we can uh, quickly distinguish what parts are affected or not. So filters also have distributions and the distributions, as you can see here, they could be used to select uh, specific areas and uh, yeah, terrain hotspots if you, if you want to ask that. So example, if you use the, the flow distribution, then it would mean that um, everything where rain comes down and flows down, um, that filter will be applied. As you can see, of course, rain falls down on the entire terrain. Sometimes it's stronger, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's not that strong. So you have different block, block effects. Well, let's try another one. Let's see. Let's, let's use the height one because here I can sh uh, show it pretty well. As you already can see, the height goes from 10 meter to 300 meter. As you can see, the ground has no blocks. And I can increase that here and mask out where I want to have these blocks. I also can blend that in so I have a seamless blending between the underlying and the top part. Um, and there are so many, many distributions you can use um, to, to make that effect working. Another thing now with the distributions is like you can add a sub distribution, for example, to the height value. So we could use another distribution, which just affects the terrain um, based on the selected height here. So you can build up really complex distribution behavior um, for filters and materials, of course. And um, distributions also have effects. So the height distribution has effects and there are also effects like, like an invert effect, which quickly just inverts the entire distribution. And as you can see, we have the inverted ver version of the one that we selected. Um, you have also blur and whatever you can think of here. Um, of course, not every effect makes sense on every distribution. So there are um, like effects that are working better with, with specific distribution. So this is like a learning process, of course. But um, um, you may also use um, heat maps to visualize which distribution is directly affected. That's where the heat maps come into a really good um, situation if you're using the heat maps or the distributions for the filters specifically. Um, so there are many, many possibilities you have here. Um, an in-depth tutorial for filters um, will be served um, by Tyler later once we are done. For now, it's just important for you to know that you can add filters. Filters are affecting the terrain. They're manipulating and transforming it in some way. You can combine filters. You can group filters, making things a lot easier to better organize filters. Um, filters also have distributions and distributions ha may have sub distributions. Distributions can also be blended together. So for example, if I'm adding a cavity distribution on top of it, I can select the second one and tell it how it should um, work with the above distribution. Like it's a multiplication or is it an additive um, adding? Um, another thing is that distributions also have effects. So you can, um, just like in Photoshop, you can 
further manipulate how the distribution should be further um, manipulated afterwards once it's uh, completely applied. Um, okay, so that's for this tutorial. I would suggest to tinker a little bit around with the with the filters, test them out, test the different combinations, try every properties and settings to see to how things are working um, and try to save them away. I'm going to show you how to how to save uh, a filter if you created something really nice. It's pretty easy. We have those presets here. So what you would do is like, uh, oh, we don't have that included in that version. Okay, however, if you have a distribution created, you can drag a distribution. For example, we have that height distribution and just drop it into the distribution or, uh, uh, folder under the presets and then you can reuse it at any time. Okay, so if you delete it, move it out back and drop it in here, it's back in again. Um, we won't, we don't have that for filters yet in this version I'm showing you, but it would exactly work the same way once you've created a filter. Just drag and drop directly here into the presets folder and it will work out of the box. Okay, hope that helped. Um, thanks a lot for watching and in the next tutorial video I'm going to cover the basics of the materials. Thank you, bye bye.